What's up, Tubies? Hey, just when I thought I was done with this game, Warzone, just from the game mechanics to the cheaters and the hackers and just the, the lack of transparency from uh, the developers about any of the updates and changes they've made. Um, well, I've actually been surprised with the uh, patch notes for this season, and there's some exciting things I'd like to talk about. And I know J-God has already went through this, you know, with... The broader community but you know this is more for my circle of friends and the the minute amount of people that really kind of follow me and play this game and take a look at what i have to say about things and uh that are just involved with what i'm doing here online in this game so um i really thought that this patch was gonna come out and it was gonna break a lot of stuff and it was just gonna drive the nail in the coffin for me uh with this game um, but after reading the patch notes, I didn't even read the patch notes. Actually, I just hit J God's video and started watching it. Well, he actually missed a couple things and he didn't talk about a few things that I felt I wanted to talk about. So that, that's what I'm going to do here, I think. Uh, so with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and switch this uh, view here. So I want to talk about this. So we're, I'm going to go through these patch notes and there's some really, there's a few things that I really want to talk about that are really kind of exciting to me. Some things I've been waiting for. And also a lot of things that were really kind of unexpected. So the season three patch notes. And by the way, today they're supposed to release the the map, the new map. But there's a countdown timer in the game. So if you go in the game and try to play Verdansk, you're just going to get Rebirth. You can only play Rebirth Island. And that's going to be until 2 p.m. Central Time today. So obviously I won't be able to play that. And I might stream later on. I don't know if I can get some downtime and actually play. But uh, for now, I'm going to go over this and uh, talk about these things. So, and keep in mind, my daughter's up running around, so if she comes in, gets in camera, you know, that's all that is. Uh, so anyway, so Call of Duty Warzone Season 3 patch notes, all right? Um, just talking it up right here. Uh, free content flowing, blah, 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 multiplayer maps, next chapter of Zombies Outbreak, and that's in Black Ops Cold War. I don't really talk about Black Ops Cold War. I never bought Cold War because, well, they didn't really sell me on it, and I still felt like uh, Warzone was a little more fun. There are some aspects of Cold War that I do think are, is fun and probably better than Warzone, but really didn't justify me uh, paying for the game. Um, and they called this an earth-shattering Warzone update. So it might be earth-shattering. <laughs> now, I'm yet to go in and play, but I have a feeling uh, this is the direction I've been waiting for Activision to go forever. You know, and Raven, it looks like Raven Software is finally kind of jumped on things and they're starting to hit stuff up the biggest thing that's noticeable is in these patch notes you're going to see that they actually give explanations so they're a lot more transparent and this is something that i think the entire community has wanted for a long time so let's just scroll down they got an event going on the hunt for adler um, not big on events uh, some of you may be but you know it's just intel challenges it looks like uh, you can get some stuff for that mm. yeah so this is probably mostly in-season stuff that you can do. So I'm not, you know, not a big deal to me. The Battle Pass, just going through, obviously, kind of recycled here from all the other seasons. You know, you just get new weapons, new skins, new store items you can blow your money on. Uh, you know, PPSH 41, SMG at level uh, tier 15. Um, some blueprints, assault rifle, shotgun. The, there's a K31 sniper rifle at level 31. Uh, tier 55 you get an lmg blueprint i still to this day don't really play lmgs i just even when they had the uh the bruin when it was all amazing i just at the end of the day i just they're slow and i don't know i feel like they got to do something with uh, lmgs to make them stand out more but right now i just i don't i don't really care for them much like i would think that maybe if they could make it to where when you have an lmg and you go prone or if you mount on something almost zero recoil if they had something like that you know you know obviously you'd need a delay from the dolphin dive but that's just me wishful thinking so and then at tier 100 you get a legendary sniper rifle blueprint and the wraith skin so that's i guess if you have the battle pass all right so here's a big thing with the map uh maps got nuked i don't know if you've watched any of the other videos by now i'm sure you have um it was kind of a wasn't really all that amazing to see it was kind of you know, I just, it wasn't all that great. I just, I wasn't impressed, let's put it that way. Uh, so general, here's a big thing. NVIDIA DLSS is now available in Call of Duty for those of us on PC. So if you have an RTX graphics card, which I do, 
and some of my other friends do, and maybe some of you do, uh, you can now enable uh, NVIDIA DLSS to boost your performance and play at higher resolutions and graphics settings. So those of you, you know who you are when you got those high-end uh, RTX cards. You want to go in that, uh, you know, that 4K stuff? Well, guess what? You're going to like this. So um, I'm not sure if this will help me too much. I got a 2060 Super, but I'll just have to go in there and mess with it and see. Uh, and here's an important one that I've always, I'm glad they finally did. I go on Plunder a lot just to rank up Cold War guns. So the end of game open mic has been turned off for modes with infinite respawn mechanics. By the way, if you hear the whining in the background, that's my dog. She wants to get out and go out of the cage and go outside. All right. Um, player rank will display the correct rank icons in the after action report. Okay, whatever. Not a big deal to me. Um, gameplay. Loot that spawns across for dance has once again been updated. So it now... All the loot is going to be exclusively Black Ops Cold War weapons. So they're not going to have, I guess, any Modern Warfare guns. So I don't, I don't know what that's all about. Um, I guess that's cool. Uh, you know, and maybe it's probably good because they can showcase how they've really fixed a lot of the Cold War guns in this patch. I think that's probably why they did it, um, <clears throat> including the, the sniper rifle, the K31 sniper rifle, which I believe you get that at level 100 if you have the battle pass and also the PPSH-41 SMG. So it's going to be fun to be trying out those guns. So and this is what I'm already seeing is that I'm kind of getting pulled back into the game to, to go check it out and to play it and then, you know, have a role with these uh, these these new uh, weapons and just how they balance things out. So, and then it says only legendary weapons will spawn as blueprints. So that means, I guess, all your blueprint guns are going to be legendary guns. So we're going to see orange, you know, orange guns, I guess is what I usually call them. Uh, <clears throat> here's one that I'm actually this is probably the only one that I'm not really happy with all right it says players no longer take armor bypassing damage when using a riot shield and facing an active thermite grenade so in the past I've always thrown thermites at shield players you know and as long as you can hit them they're guaranteed gonna die um, so what they did is made it to where that thermite probably isn't gonna kill them. you might even need to hit them with two that's something I'm not sure about I have to test but it does mean I'm probably not going to run Thermites anymore. But right after that, it says sticking a player with Simtex will now always down them. So I guess if you throw a Simtex now at the Riot Shield player, he's going to down him. He's going to get down. So um, I think before, if you hit him with the Simtex, it would just kill him. So, but now what it's going to do, it'll just down them and it gives them a chance to kind of get, get back up or, you know, have a teammate revive them, uh, which is kind of cool I guess um, that's probably good for for your uh, <laughs> your riot shield players what baby you want me to turn that on okay I'll turn it on I got a little interruption here there you go you gotta wait for it to turn on okay you just wait it'll come on bring it here uh, accessibility they added mono audio to the volume settings and audio options uh, maybe that's good for some people maybe that's a crappy headset issue or I don't know um, maybe I don't know that not doesn't really pertain to much of the people I play with because all of us are usually running pretty decent headsets uh, bug fixes all right they fixed the bug with most Cold War barrels where hip spread and ADS idle sway were being increased when they shouldn't should not have been so that's a good fix. Um, fix a bug with the ZRG 20 millimeter optics that disabled the ability to hold your breath. Good fix. Uh, some loot would drop in close proximity on death. Not sure what that was all about. Uh, they fixed a bug where if a player is down while switching to a gunner seat, they would become invisible or, or invulnerable because that bug keeps coming back and forth, right? Well, they fix it again. What, baby? What fishies? Koi's fishy. So anyway, I'm going to pause this and get back to it. All right, getting back into this. So uh, fixed a bug causing the random operator select option to only select coalition operators from Modern Warfare. I didn't even know that existed, to be honest. Uh, fixed a bug causing Baker's fourth operation or operator mission objective to not track properly. Eliminate 15 enemies using a weapon with an attract, uh, attached 2x magnified scope or greater. <laughs> Wasn't aware of that because I don't really do those those challenges much but uh fix the bug causing certain operator models to appear headless while using the f1 
Yeah. Glad I never saw that one. <laughs> all right, so let's get into the meat and the potatoes of all this. So weapons. <clears throat> Cold War weapons have had their ammo names updated. All right, so they're still working on all these attachments and all this stuff and the names and just getting the descriptions proper and all this stuff. So the F1 crosshair has been updated to match other assault rifles. And I think that's, uh, I think the F1 had a three prong kind of crosshair. Hmm, I'll do that right. <laughs> three prong, <laughs> but it's become a four prong, maybe as my guess, but I could be wrong about that. But either way, crosshair change. Mm, all right, they got a new weapon, the SMG. We already went over that. Uh, Two weapon unlock challenges. You get people get a second chance to go for the LC10 if you didn't get it this season, or was it last season? Uh, oh, and the yeah, I think it was last season. And then the FAR83, <clears throat> um, using assault rifles get two headshot kills in 15 different matches. So basically, you can get both of these guns. I have a lot to say about the FAR83 coming up here soon, so I'll get to that in a minute. So assault rifles, the Cold War AK47, the recoil pattern has been adjusted. This is good. Because I think the AK, the Cold War AK, was just too unstable to have any kind of um, longevity. Because, you know, it takes a lot of bullets to kill people, and you need the rifle to <laughs> do what it's supposed to do. All right, um, which is basically not bounce all over the place, right? And here's where I was talking about earlier how Raven, or, you know, they've become more transparent. All right, they're actually starting to talk about why they're doing stuff. This is what we've always wanted. We've always been asking for this. Okay, he said, the recoil pattern on the Cold War AK-47 had made its downsides far more apparent than its upsides. We've smoothed out its recoil to make it easier to control. If you are accurate or skilled at recoil control, you will now find the Cold War AK-47 quite effective at most ranges. All right, this could be a good thing. AK-47, you know, it's a pretty powerful gun. So maybe this is something that might replace the AK or the AMAX or something like that. All right, now... This is my favorite one right here. I've been, I've always liked the Farah 83, but I've had issues with it. Just the recoil has been horrible. The long range damage and, and mainly the long range damage that you get with it was always kind of crappy because at the longer ranges, the, the stability of the rifle was just all over the place. You just, you couldn't stay on target, even if you were the best at recoil control. And, you know, it was just really difficult, but the gun had a fire rate similar to the M4, and it was just really fast, the M4 and the Kilo, and I felt it was like a viable choice for close and medium range, and for me, mainly close range, because I always like to grab an AR that I like to use for close range, and it just was under par all the time. I'd get outgunned, and it, most times, 90% of the time or more, it was because trying to control the recoil because the damn things is bouncing all over the place. It just made it to where you just had to shoot a whole mags at people, and they still wouldn't die. And you would usually get toasted by someone with their F1 or their MAC-10. Well, check this out. They've increased the damage, the minimum damage, from 25 to 26. So it gets one more damage, all right? So that's the minimum damage increase, all right? And then the maximum damage decreased from 33 to 31, all right? And then the maximum damage range has increased by 17%, all right? And here's the best part of all this. The recoil pattern has been adjusted. All right. This means this FAR 83 is probably one of the first guns I'm going to get into the game and I'm going to start playing and checking it out and seeing if it's viable. All right. There's a couple more guns too I want to talk about that are going to be in this category with the FAR 83 as well, but I'll get to that in a minute. All right. And it says right here as a fast firing AR with relatively strong recoil, we felt there was too much of an identity overlap between the FAR 83 and the F1. We have smoothed out its recoil and pushed its damage profile out to be a more viable mid-long range AR option. I'm really excited about trying this gun. I'm, it's probably what I'm going to be doing today. This is the, one of the first guns I'm going to test, along with the two other guns that I want to mention here in this video. All right. Now, the F1 <clears throat> got a nerf. Maximum damage decreased from 30 to 27. All right. Maximum damage range decreased by 15%. Okay. All right. Neck damage multiplier changed from 1.1 to 1. Um, this is new to everybody. I didn't know there was neck damage, unless this is a typo, which I don't think it is. Um, apparently, there's some kind of modifier when you shoot somebody in the neck. <laughs> I don't know. You tell me. All right. Nonetheless, they reduced the multiplier from 1.1 to 1. All right. Uh, oh, and also, by the way, I'm going to be talking about the burst rifles here soon, too. Um, 
So just hang tight. We'll get to that. Uh, upper, upper torso damage multiplier was changed from 1.1 to 1. So they reduced the damage multipliers on the F1, okay? And ADS speed was decreased slightly. So nerf, okay? Uh, with high damage, rate of fire, and this is that transparency thing they're talking about. They're explaining all this stuff with each gun. I love this, that they're doing this, all right? It says, with high damage, rate of fire, and a competitive mag size, the F1 has enjoyed a lengthy reign of terror on the short to mid-range engagement space. When a weapon is so ruthlessly efficient that it pushes the entirety of a weapon category out of viability, thank you, it needs to be addressed. The F1 will remain as a respectable option following this change, but it should now be a playstyle preference rather than a loadout necessity. Thank you, Raven. All right? It's about time. And I hope they didn't just do this with this gun, but a lot of the other guns, you know, and I think they might have hit it with this this season. So I'm really excited to get in the game. Today I'll be doing it. Might stream it, might just make a video. I don't know. We'll see. All right. Groza, I played the Groza a little bit. This is coming up next year, um, but I really just didn't stick with it. Um, I still felt like the F1 was still more viable than a Groza. So, but, and if you were going to take the Groza, why not just take a Mac 10 kind of thing? But anyway, so they went ahead and nerfed this preemptively too. So they increased its recoil slightly. The ADS speed was decreased slightly, and the upper torso damage multiplier changed from. 1.3 down to 1.1, all right? That's, it's good that they preempted this, all right? And it says, this change is more of a precaution. We expect in the absence of the F1 that the Groza would rise to take its place. Uh, it kind of already did, too. A lot of people were already playing it. it. said, while there will always be a meta, we want the meta to exist in a TTK range that is a bit higher than where we are currently, okay? In that regard, we believe the Groza was a bit of an outlier that, much like the F1, could have been detrimental to weapon diversity. Okay, bringing the Groza down a notch should allow for some healthy competition in this weapon category. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Now, I said there were three other guns. Now I'm about to tell you about the second gun that I think is a really big deal. All right. The Krieg 6. All right. This gun has always been kind of, kind of solid, but it just couldn't compete because of these other guns taking it out of the, uh, you know, the of the race. Um, so here's what they did with the Krig, Krig 6. Now the Krig 6 is competitive, uh, just like the FAR-83. The FAR-83 is probably the first gun I'm going to mess with because I'm looking for a new close-range gun, AR, with iron sights. That's what I'm looking for. Krig 6 and the FAR might be viable options. All right, there's a third gun. We'll get to that in a minute. All right, so the head damage multiplier changed from 1.4 to 1.5, Krig 6. Really? That's That's good. That's crazy. <laughs> They might have actually overbuffed this gun. I don't know. I'll have to go test it. But it says neck damage multiplier change from 1 to 1.3. I mean, that's massive. All right. So <laughs> upper torso damage multiplier change from 1 to 1.1. And the lower torso damage multiplier change from 1 to 1.1. This gun got buffed all around. All right. No changes to the, the recoil or anything like that. But it said the Krieg 6 has long been overshadowed by all other all-stars in the AR category. We believe this change will allow for a more competitive time to kill, given the shots are well-placed. Beautiful. Krieg 6, I, it's like from reading these notes, I can already tell you what might be some of the metas. It's going to be these two guns I already mentioned. The Faro 83 um, and the Krieg 6 are both going to be guns that I think are going to start blossoming. And people are going to be like, oh, man, you got to do this. You got to use this. All right. These were both guns that I liked originally, but I just, uh, you know, I couldn't stay competitive with them because, you know, the Fara was just, it sucked at range. It was bouncing all over the place. And the Krig 6 was just not very, just didn't put out as much, you know, as, as much damage, even though it was like stable. So hopefully um, this is going to be something that we'll get to check out and uh, when we play later today. So uh, now I said there were three guns. I'm moving on to the third one now that might be more viable. Now it's the QBZ-83, all right? The move speed and the ADS speed have both been increased on it. So this is turning into kind of a more of a, you know, movement-oriented, you know, mobility-oriented uh, weapon. So <clears throat> run and gun, right? So the neck damage multiplier went from 1 to 1 1.2, all right? And then the torso damage multiplier went from 1 to 1 1.1. So... Once again, speed increase on it and damage increases on it. So anyway, they also said here that QBZ-83 is a unique weapon that trades overall lethality for mobility. Okay, we aim to provide players with tools to support a multitude of interesting playstyle options. Okay, this is good. Get us away from this meta bullshit every fucking patch, right? 
Our goal is that with the right attachment, skillful maneuvering and rotations will be a hallmark of the QBZ playstyle. It's a gun that I might want to look at too. So, and I will actually. It says we have also given it a much needed nudge in lethality if you can manage aiming and moving simultaneously. So, pretty good stuff. All right. Moving on, submachine guns, the LC10. The velocity was increased on that, so velocity is usually good for uh, moving targets. All right, makes sense, right? It's a submachine gun. All right, Max 10 or the Mac 10 got a damage debuff. Um, it says this is another precautionary change to pro promote diversity. Uh, the Mac 10 is both popular and fun to use. Part of what makes the Mac 10 feel fair to play against is that its upside feels comparative to its downside. That is where player skill comes in. Knowing when and what weapon to swap to during an engagement is a facet of skill expression. We want to highlight whenever possible. All right, while this change only brings the Mac 10's time to kill up by 10%, so it's going to take 10% longer for it to kill somebody. It says we think this is a good place to start to encourage exploration in the SMG category. I think they're making the right moves here. They're going in the right direction. Okay. Uh, the biggest thing I might have a problem with is are we going to go into the game and find out that everything else got broken? <clears throat> All right, that's my concern. If if I start seeing that, I'm just I'm gonna start moving away from Warzone. I'm tired of playing broken stuff. Okay. Um, moving on to sniper rifles, Pellington 703. All right, the ADS speed was increased and the raise time was increased slightly. So I'm not sure what raise time is a ref reference to. Maybe when you're running or something, you're walking and it raises up. You know. Or I would think raise time is the same thing as ADS speed time. So I don't know. I don't know what that means. So we're going to have to go in there and look at that. All right. Tactical rifles. All right. The Cold War tactical rifle, Charlie, that's your AUG, Cold War AUG. Time between bursts has increased by 33%. That's a lot. Burst, 33% weight. Burst, or 33% uh, increase in the wait time, all right, between the bursts. All right. And it says neck damage multiplier change from a whopping 1.8 down to 1.3. Why was this so high in the first place? I don't know. I think they just wanted to make burst rifles viable. But if they were going to do that, why'd they leave the uh, the FN 556 out of the, the loop? I don't know. Did I say the gun name right? I don't know. I, I think I did. Uh, then M16 time between bursts was increased by 10%. So the M16 is going to burst quicker over the AUG. So AUG is like fire, wait, fire. The M16 is going to be like fire, wait, fire, wait, fire. It's going to shoot a little faster. Right, but the neck neck damage multiplier went, went down from the 1.8, just like the AUG, but it went down lower to 1.1 instead of the 1.3 that the AUG has. So the AUG is going to hit harder, but the M16 is going to shoot faster. So you're going to pick one or the other between these two rifles. All right. Said so the Cold War tactical rifle Charlie and the M16 were able to reach rates of fire that allowed the wielder to negate a, re a requisite identity pillar of burst rifles, <clears throat> which was accuracy. Right. With their extreme rates of fire and generous burst pattern, shots were not required to be well placed. They weren't required to be well placed, um, and they're saying it because of the rate of fire and the burst pattern. I think it has something to do with fat bullets. So I think fat bullets have existed in this game, and no one's really talked about it, but I think it does exist. Anyway, it says you would inherit the high damage profile and range of burst rifles with minimal downside. With this change and the change to fire rate barrels noted below, which we're about to go check out, it says you will now need to aim deliberately if you intend to kill quickly. So what that means is before, is you didn't really have to aim to hit people, right? You just get the bullets off in the general direction, all right? I still think that has something to do with um, the bullets just kind of being fatter. I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but I, I think there's a such thing as fat bullets in this game. Regular bullets and fat bullets. So says, and we're keeping a close eye on the A-Max. No king rules forever. So they're probably going to maybe nerf the A-Max at some point. Um, unless they feel like all the changes they made now makes the A-Max, you know, on the same level or up to par. So we'll see. All right. Attachments. Here's a new thing. This is something I'm really excited about. I think it's cool. I'm glad they're introducing this into the game. It's called position concealment. All right. Position concealment will reduce the time your position is, a vi is visible on your mini-map and the compass after you shoot your gun. All right. This effect has been added as a pro on both the flash guard and the SOCOM KGB eliminator. All right, so we got flash guards and the KGB eliminator. So we got flash guard. I'm assuming that includes all the muzzles of all the guns that are called that have a flash guard. So what this is going to mean is when you fire your gun with the flash guard, it's supposed to reduce the uh, um, 
the visibility of when what's where you're at, you know, when someone's looking at you, which was never really a thing in this game. I don't think that was ever really big on giving people away uh, because you'd usually go off of audio or you'd just see them, right? Uh, you knew they were over there. Or you would see the tracers, right? If there was no tracers, then maybe the flash thing would muzzle flash, right? Would be an issue. But what it's going to basically do is make it to where instead of you showing up on the regular amount of time on the mini map after you fire with a mu uh, flash guard on, then maybe they're going to cut it down in half, maybe more, maybe maybe less. I don't know. But I think this is a step in the right direction, though, <clears throat> because they're making these attachments more viable. We're talking about muzzles, right? Everybody always takes a monolithic suppressor or an agency suppressor because of obvious reasons, right? And they're and it's always been the meta. They've got meta guns and meta attachments, and they just need to make it to where other things are viable and competitive. And I'm tired of just every season coming out with, oh, you got to use this gun, and you got to use this gun. Not only these two guns, right, but you also got to use this attachment, and you got to use this. You know, how about some diversity in it where you can have a certain play style and do certain things. You can switch it up to uh, compensate for whatever it is, you're, the way you, you're trying to play. And if you're good at playing that certain style, then you need those different attachments to increase, you know, to make you more skilled at it. Anyway, just my two cents. All right, barrels. All right, for the M16 and the AUG, all right, there was two barrels, the rapid fire barrel and the strike team barrels. They've, uh, they've had the fire rates reduced on both of these barrels. Um, you can look at the numbers here. 58% for the rapid fire on the, on the M16 and 56% for the uh, rapid fire on the AUG, right? And then for the strike team barrel on the M16, it was 66%. Strike team barrel on the uh, AUG, 64% uh, re fire rate reduction. That's a huge fire rate reduction. It's like, I mean, well, I shouldn't say fire rate reduction. I said increase to the rate of fire has been reduced. All right, so these are nerfs. These are not buffs, all right? It's decreasing the amount of time between bursts, okay? I'm sorry, increasing the amount of time between bursts. My bad. All right, and then the other barrels were the titanium barrel. All right, on the M16, 61%, and then uh, uh, AUG was 59%. So uh, make what you will out, out of that. Uh, the Sorokin 140mm Auto, which is the Sykov, um, minimum damage reduced from 23 to 19. All right. And then when you have the Sykov also with the Akimbo setup, it says the minimum damage reduced from 19 to 14. So I didn't even get a chance to really play this gun, and they've already nerfed it super quick. They took care of it, nipped it in the bud, all right? So you guys may have a better idea of this. I didn't really get to play it. Um, it this only affects the weapon when both the Sorkin, um, when the Sykov has been far more lethal at range than we would prefer. Uh, it says when secondary weapons can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with, or even best, a primary weapon consistently, we risk streamlining access to one of the most powerful perks in the game, which is Ghost. So I'm not sure how they linked Ghost with the the akimbo and all that but it says while we continue to examine the impact the ghost has on gameplay providing easier access to it with negligible downside is not something we want to enable um examine the impact that ghost has on gameplay all right you guys have had activision all right you guys have had this ghost has been in every game of call of duty what are you examining about it <laughs> i don't know man sometimes i just feel like they have their heads up their butts Anyway, I'm starting to get negative because I'm getting these feelings coming back of how much I get annoyed by this game and just the developers. It's a great game, but I feel like they've been burying it into the ground. And hopefully right now they're resurrecting it a little bit, and hopefully they can keep resurrecting it, at least until Battlefield 6 comes out. Because when Battlefield 6 comes out, I'm not going to play this game anymore. I'm most likely not. I thought there would be a chance I'd play it because of tournaments, but with all the cheaters and the hackers, I'm not even playing tournaments anymore. So, And in fact, in one of my tournaments... Uh, a hacker screwed it up for us. So we ended up getting second place in our tournament. If we would have never encountered the guy, probably would have won the tournament. So that's just how bad it is, right? Uh, so lasers, ember sighting point, ADS speed penalty was reduced by 20%. Okay, so that's a buff. Uh, the soft target designator, the flashlight's now visible during hip fire and ADS. It used to just be on when, uh, when you would just aim down sights. But I, I guess that's more realistic now, right? But... The other thing is, flashlights, are they even viable in this game? I don't know. Maybe maybe with the night maps now, maybe they did. Maybe they're viable. Who knows? 
All right, magazines, Salvo, VDV, Fast Mag, ADS speed penalty has been reduced. All right, so they're making Fast Mags and Speed Mags more viable, right? Speed bags for the pistols, uh, speed penalty reduced. ADS speed penalty is reduced by 40%. SMGs, 30%, and the snipers, 20%. All right, so these Fast Mags should uh, <clears throat> not punish you as much for your ADS times. All right, so they're trying to make these attachments more viable. I like this. It's a step in the right direction. All right, muzzle, muzzles, flash guard. They added the position concealment pro, or why do they call it pro? Pro as opposed to con, okay. So they added the position concealment pro. Okay, I was a little confused there for a second. And then the KGB eliminator, they did the same thing. All right, so that's cool. I'm gonna definitely wanna check out the flash guards uh, on that and see how flash guards help. Maybe they're bringing that in because of the nighttime maps. So they're, they're addressing the whole flash guard issue in the muzzle flash. So, and then optics. Which I still don't get it, by the way. I have to go back to this. With flashes, flash guards, why is it really relevant? Because every damn gun has this bright-ass tracer that flies out. Okay? <laughs> Doesn't make any sense. In fact, all these guns shouldn't have tracers. The only ones that should have tracers are your huge mag guns. Like, like all your LMGs. You know, and those tracers should give you... Um, the ability to just see better, you know, at longer ranges. They should give you some kind of buff, but these guys don't know anything about realism, so it's an arcade -ish game. What do you expect? All right, so optics, the SUSAT multi zoom, the ADS speed penalty was reduced. Okay, so the multi zoom is not going to have as long as the ADS time. All right, the ultra zoom custom, same thing, but by 20%. And then the vulture custom, uh, same thing, reduced by 20%. All right, and then rear grips. Increase increases to ADS speed has been reduced by roughly 10%. Okay, so I'm not sure what this is all about. I think they're about to explain it right here, but I would think that the rear grips are the only things that give you additional ADS time, at least on your Cold War guns, uh, or reduce ADS time. So why they reduced the speed was reduced by 10%. Um, I don't know. That doesn't make much sense to me. So maybe because they adjusted the other attachments. I don't know. It says, we have begun the iter iterative process of tweaking values on attachments. We would like the dim diminution, diminuous, diminution, diminution <laughs> of weapon downside to be a build direction rather than a single attachment choice. As it stands, we feel most attachments need to have their values addressed in some regard to achieve this. We are hoping to make some previously non-viable options less so in addition to widening overall build variety. All right, this may include increasing upside or downsides on existing attachments. We're also actively looking at how we can create more compelling choices within the confines of attachment categories, chiefly muzzles like the monolithic and agency suppressor. All right. Like what I was saying earlier, those are the two muzzles that everybody would pick, period. There would be no viable reason to pick anything else. All right. And that also has a lot to do with the whole ghosting thing, right? So given the magnitude of balance changes in this patch, we may see we may make some adjustments shortly after season three launch to ensure the meta is he healthy and stable. As always, please continue to provide your feedback. All right, so let's move on right real quick. Big deal right here, operators, rows. We've adjusted the row skin in order to prove the operator's readability and visibility where sources of light are available. I want to test that too. Hopefully that's going to be at some... See, Motherfuckers being invisible in this game because of their skin sitting in the dark camping. This promotes camping. Camping's annoying. Okay, so they shouldn't. They should do it with every skin that's black. To be honest. 